It's beautiful, and uh, I feel I feel humbled. I feel blessed, knowing that they are paying attention. They are paying attention. And President Trump sent us to Florida, Steve Rogers, and here he is. Thank you. Thank you so much, Annie, for giving me the opportunity to be here. Thank you for your hard work for the president and for this great country. Thank you very much. Yes, you Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, before I get started this evening, I'd like to introduce the vice president and chief executive officer of the American Winning Coalition, Mindy Papetti. Yes. Mindy, thank you for being here. I have the pleasure of meeting a real good fellow here tonight. His name is Nick, 15 years old. Where are you, Nick? Nick, right here. Nick, God bless. Thank you for being here. young people yes. at Dick's age supporting the President of the United States tells me something. We're doing something right and so is the President. <laughs> now, first and foremost, many of us who work with the America Winning Coalition and who work on the President's Advisory Board are getting a common message across this country in every town, in every city, in every village from New Jersey to California, from Florida to the Canadian border. Make no mistake about this, Donald J. Trump will be elected by a landslide. <laughs> Today under the leadership of President Trump, the GOP, the GOP because of you, Grassroots America, Main Street America is stronger and tougher than what anyone thinks about in this country today. We are strong and we are tough and we are winners. Make no mistake about that. Years ago, many years before any of us were born, this was called the Party of Lincoln. And then it was called the Party of Reagan. But again, the message that we're getting out is make no mistake about this, no matter who you are, friend or foe, this is now the party of Donald J. Trump. And all of us, every single one of us who proudly stand, not behind the president, but shoulder to shoulder with the president of the United States, we are the party that stands for the principles of God and country. since Ronald Reagan, a man sitting in the Oval Office who is not ashamed of putting together the words God and country. Right. And that is something to be proud of. We have a President of the United States who is no longer a man in the Oval Office who makes it his business to apologize for being an American. We have no one in the Oval Office who was busy going about talking about resetting, resetting relationships with Russia. But we have a man in the Oval Office who commands and demands what? Not resetting, but respect. Right. That's the kind of man we have in the Oval Office. And that's the kind of man we're going to keep in the Oval Office. We're the party that stands for defending the constitutional right of free speech. And those young people, Nick's age, with those wonderful wonderful red baseball caps, make America great again, have every right to wear those hats. They have the right to first be. We're the party, ladies and gentlemen, who has the constitutional right, who believes in the constitutional right, and who will always support the constitutional right to bear arms. No one is going to take that right away. We are the party. We are the party that stands very strong, shoulder to shoulder, and together for the constitutional right to life. Yes, sir. That is something we should never give up. And let me just say this, and I know the President talked about this briefly, maybe 
more than briefly just some time ago. What the city and state of New York did just a few weeks ago can only be described as murder. That's it. They don't like the word, but they're going to hear the word. It is murder. And I thank God Almighty that we have a president and supporters like you all over the country that will not stand for murder. Whether it's, it's, it's during birth, after birth, or whatever, it is murder. Yes, sir. And so those young, young Americans, those young people in the mother's womb are depending on you and depending on me to make sure that we keep a leader in the White House who will be their voice. Yes. We are the voice. We are stronger, we are tougher, and I don't care what you see on CNN or MSNBC or any of the mainstream media, they would lead the American people to believe that we are low on the polls, that we're on a fast railroad track going nowhere. Well, they better jump on the Trump train because you know where we're going? Right back to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. One thing I learned about, one of the many things I learned about by working with many of the people around the president, and that is, we fight to win. Yes, sir. We fight to win. And when we fight, we fight for every mile, for every yard, for every inch of what God Almighty has blessed this nation with. We will never give up, and we will never surrender. Yes, sir. Never, never, never. The great thing about the people around this country, whether, whether they're from Philadelphia, whether they're from Los Angeles or New York or any place here in Florida, there are reasons why we win. We win because we stand together, we stick together, and I think that is most important that we do is, and any you alluded to it, we are not ashamed to say we pray together. Yes, we have. We have the President of the United States, who is a prayer warrior himself, a president of the United States who stands strong and stands firm on the principles in which this country was guided upon. Now, I was in the White House several times, and I'll never forget that my wife and I, our first time in the White House, the president of the United States and Melania come down behind a podium like this, and there was a little reception for about 30 of us. And obviously, we're all excited that the president is coming here but behind the podium with his wife, and this is something that I'm just starting to publicize, because you wouldn't know this unless I shared this with you, and maybe perhaps someone else did. But our president, the first words out of his mouth was, before we do anything in this house, we're going to pray. We're going to bow our heads and pray. And, 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 and I'll never forget, he said, because we are accountable to God. And I can't not do this job without God. That's the real character of Donald Trump. Right? During the Republican National Convention, I was running around going from TV hit to TV hit to TV hit. I'm walking down the hallway and this woman grabs my hand and she says, do you have a moment? And I said, well, I, I, I got only a moment. She says, good, we're going to pray. And that woman, Mindy Papetti. Mindy Papetti was there as a representative for the uh, Republican Party at the Republican National Convention and she and a team of hundreds of prayer warriors were running around that great, great stadium you saw praying for President Donald Trump, praying for this country. That's right. And that's why we win. Yes. Yes. We win because we believe in that power of God. Yes. We win because we believe in the power that we give. I'm going to read something to you because it's very applicable to today's president. President Lincoln in his time said this, the dogmas of the quiet past are inadequate to the stormy present. The occasion is piled high with difficulty, and we must rise. We must rise with the occasion. As our case is new, so we must think anew, and so we must act anew. And then, and then, said Abraham Lincoln, we shall save our country. Yes, sir. President Donald Trump, in this 21st century, in our time, in your time, in my time, understands that we are embarking upon a great struggle. 
And that struggle, ladies and gentlemen, make no mistake about this, is for the heart, the soul, and the spirit of the United States of America. understands that we are in a struggle that is pitting socialism against capitalism, fear against faith, and good against evil. You cannot describe the other side by only one word. You describe it as evil. evil. It is evil. And I have never been in my talks around this country ever using that word until I saw that none of them on the Democrat Leninist Stalin party. Right. Because it's an ideology. It's an ideology that was born in, in Lenin and Stalin. And people will say to me, how, how, do you, how did you say that? How do you know that? How do you understand that? Talk to my wife. My wife was raised in the Soviet Union. She was not raised under a beautiful flag, red, white, and blue with stars on it. She was raised under a red flag with a hammer and a sickle, ladies and gentlemen. She was raised under a socialist, communist regime. She can tell you what it is to have Obamacare. She can tell you what it is to have a socialist agenda, like we're seeing tear apart Venezuela. She can tell you all these things. And when she saw a man like Donald Trump announce his presidency and then realize that we were going to be in the middle of the campaign, she got on our knees and thanked God Almighty that she came to the United States of America legally, yeah. legally, and worked hard, and got a job, and got an education, and now she works hard for these stars and stripes yes, and the president serving this land and serving his God. Yes, so that's why I can say what I say about a Leninist Stalin ideology that is gripping what was once the party of John F. Kennedy. It is no more. This is why it is so important for us to come together. This is a struggle, a struggle that all of us need to engage in. Hey, mom and dad and grandma and grandpa, you're out there. Aunt and uncle, sister and brother, you're out there. You need to engage in the struggle for future Americans, for future Americans, and even those Americans, as I stated before, or they're not yet born, so that they will live in the land of the free, in the home of the brave, so that they will not live under a red flag with a hammer and a sickle. They will not live in a land with a red flag that has those stars and that hammer and sickle above those stars like the Chinese live under so that they will live in a land of the free and the home of the brave. Yes, sir. That is the plan that really needs Now, I've asked people all over this country, you know, people will ask me, Jesus, is there anything I could do for you? Yeah, you could do something for me. Some people tonight ask me, hey, Mr. Rogers, I'm glad you're here. By the way, this is why Marco Rubio won. <laughs> They say, <laughs> Mr. Rogers, is Andy, so I'm glad you came down. Is there anything we can do for you? I said, yep. There is something you can do for me. There is something you can do for the President of the United States. And here's what you can do, folks. And please, if anything I said tonight or anything I'm going to say, I would ask you to remember this favor that I'm asking you to do. I want you, beginning if not tonight, tomorrow, as you're walking down the street, as you're in a mall or shopping around, I want you to look in the eyes of your children and your grandchildren. And then as you're walking, I want you to look at the young children and the moms and dads and grandparents with the kids in the strollers and, and, and take a good look at them. And then I want you to think about this. Many years from now, when they're in their 20s or 30s or maybe even older or maybe even younger, your grandchildren and children and some of those children you looked at are going to ask this question. What did you do to save my country in your time? What did you do to make sure that I would live under the freedom of this great flag? What did you do when the only president in our lifetime was willing to stand up and give everything up to stand for God and country? What did you do, Mom? What did you do, Dad? What did you do, Grandma and Grandpa or Aunt and Uncle God Almighty? What did you do? And I hope to God and pray to God every day that you'll be able to say to them and look right in those eyes and say to them, well, 
son, daughter, grandson, granddaughter. I did everything I could do to help President Donald Trump lead the way, to lead the way to reignite a light that directed us to a shining city on a hill where God is worshiped and where the citizens of this country are free. I did the best I could. And, and then you will be able to say, if you notice youngster, if you notice son or daughter, if you notice we succeeded. And you know why we succeeded? We succeeded by way of hard work. But very, very importantly, we succeeded by way of putting our faith to work through hard work and through prayer. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. That is what we need to tell our children and our grandchildren. Because by sharing just those words in an answer to that generation who is probably not yet born, we're going to show them that there is indeed a partnership between God and country. And that there is indeed a President of the United States in our time who was not ashamed to use the word God and country together. And I tell you folks, if we continue on that path, if we continue on that path, we know we're winning in 2020, but we will be setting the stage for 2024 and beyond to make sure that we have a president of the United States of America who will never, never, never give up on the common threat of God and country, which represents this great republic. Together, folks, when we look at our children and future generations, we will be able to say that, yep, we did the best we could. We did the best we could, and we succeeded in making America prosperous again, in making America strong again, in making America safe again, and yeah, together, in making America great again. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 That those words resonate Trump 2020 and we fulfill that indeed. Indeed.